Mark and I are still at Car Creek Park in Seattle, Washington. Time to talk about nested proofs. A nested proof occurs when you do an indirect proof or a conditional proof inside an indirect proof or a conditional proof. So, for example, suppose I had a proof and I decide to do an indirect proof or a conditional proof. And so I begin by indenting and drawing a line and making an assumption. So I'm doing an indirect proof or, an, or a conditional proof. Now suppose either at the beginning or somewhere in the middle, I decide that I need a certain formula and I can get it using the indirect proof or the conditional proof method. The rules, the way they're written, allow me to indent at any point, make an assumption, and begin a new indirect or conditional proof. So I can, while I'm, st while I'm in the middle of this in indented subproof, I'll indent and start a new indented subproof with a new assumption. The, the only rule to keep in mind is you cannot close this one off, excuse me, you cannot close this one off and discharge the assumption and move over here until you've closed this one off and discharged the assumption and moved over here. So what I'll do is I'll make an assumption, I'll do my thing, I'll reach what I need, I'll discharge the assumption and, and disindent to here, and when I reach here what I needed to reach from this assumption, then this one's completed, I'll disindent and discharge the assumption and move over to the uh, under the premises. And so that's basically how a nested proof works. And what do you know, I have an example to demonstrate the idea. So this this is when I look at this proof, I look at the conclusion it's main connective to horseshoe. So I immediately think that I'll probably want to do a conditional proof on this. I don't see any way to use the eight inference rules to solve it alone without using a conditional or an indirect proof. Uh, the horseshoe suggests the conditional proof method. So I'm going to begin by indenting and draw the line and I'm going to begin a conditional proof. Remember with conditional proof, I'm trying to prove a conditional, a statement of the form P horseshoe Q. So I'm going to assume the antecedent of the P horseshoe Q. So I'm going to assume A, and I write AP, assume premise, as my justification. I've assumed A. My goal now is to reach the consequent, the Q part of the P horseshoe Q. At the bottom of this indentation, so at the bottom of this indentation, I want to reach B horseshoe K. So at this point, I'm after B horseshoe K as what I'm trying to derive. Well, B horseshoe K is itself a conditional as well. And so now that suggests maybe I could use conditional proof within this conditional proof to get the B horseshoe K, which is what I needed here in the first place. So I'm going to indent and start another conditional proof within this conditional proof. So I indent and I am, I'm trying to get B horseshoe K, so I'm going to assume the B part, the P part of the P horseshoe Q, the B. I'll write assume premise, and I'm now starting another conditional proof, a conditional proof for B horseshoe K within the conditional proof for A horseshoe B horseshoe K. Does that make sense? So now I assumed B, and my uh, indented subproof is after K. At this point, all I need to get is K, and I can then disindent and assert B horseshoe K. So now looking at the premises, certainly A matches the A here, so from P and P horseshoe Q, I can infer Q by modus ponens 1 and 3. So I've, I've assumed P, P horseshoe Q, I've inferred Q. 
should we wait till that train's over? Okay, so I'll keep going. So from P and P horseshoe Q, I inferred Q. Now from P and P horseshoe Q, I see another modus ponens. So from P and P horseshoe Q, I inferred the Q. So that's modus ponens again on um, four and five. P, P horseshoe Q, bring down the Q. Now I'm trying to reach K at the bottom of this. I'm not trying to reach B horseshoe K. I'm just trying to reach K. And I see this matches this. And so that suggests that I could do an addition. And from C I in inferred C wedge H. I can add anything to a line of a proof. So I added to line six. I added H. And so I get C wedge H, and that of course matches the antecedent of line two. And so P, P, horseshoe Q, I infer Q. That's modus ponens, um, lines three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Modus ponens on six and seven. No, one, three, four, five, six, seven and two. So that's modus ponens seven and two. P, P horseshoe Q, I brought down the Q. Now, when I assumed B, I was after K. I've reached the K, I may disindent and assert B horseshoe K. The first thing I assumed, horseshoe the last thing I got to. That's my inside CP. So that's conditional proof four through eight because I cite the indented lines that justify inferring B horseshoe K. Now when I assumed A, I was after B horseshoe K as the bottom line of the indentation. So I assumed A, I reached B horseshoe K. I'm allowed to disindent. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm allowed to disindent from A and A horseshoe B horseshoe K. I may now infer the A, then the horseshoe and then the B horseshoe K from P to Q. And I write CP lines three through nine. And I close off this conditional proof. I Notice I closed this conditional proof off before I closed this one off. And now I've reached A horseshoe B horseshoe K. That's my conclusion. So I've proven the argument valid. So there's a nested proof for you. Thank you.